Well, hello, folks. Well, winter's upon us. It's not real cold yet, but it's going to be. I'm sitting here by the stove today. So we're going to take it easy. Anyway, I just finished this bowl, and it's, uh, I call it a stuff bowl, because what I did is I just went around the shop and picked up scraps, and, you know, uh, I got pine cones and gumballs and pieces of aluminum. I got just anything I could find, and I put them in resin and uh, cast me a, a bowl, and I uh, turned it. It's, uh, I got it a little thick, very deliberately, because I wanted to be able to see all the stuff inside it, which you can do. I had no problem getting the shine I want, but I got it. Anyway, uh, probably not going to make a video for a little while. It's time to, you know, crank up the camper and head through the deer woods and, and stuff like that. So, just don't, just not going to have the time. Anyway, uh, let's get with it and I'm going to show you how I made this sap sucker. Give you a little better look at it here so you get all excited. Inside turned out really nice, and of course my normal laser stuff on the bottom. So All there kinds of different things I've got laying around, and, and I've got this box here, and I'm just going to make me a bunch of stuff, you know? Like right here, see, this is like aluminum shavings. Okay, right here, this, this is some uh, cedar shavings from Forest. Forster bit. I thought they was real pretty. And then in here, I just went around and gathered up different things, as you can see. Like here's odds and ends of cutoffs, and uh, that's some different shavings, and there's some of this, and all kinds of, uh, you know, old pen blanks, and uh, alum uh, aluminum walnut blocks, and this is some cherry. Uh, here's a, a little bit of white pen blank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the bandsaw and I'm going to start just whittling off little chunks of stuff, you know, small enough to manage and just throw them all into here with some aluminum shavings and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And then we're going to make it the bowl. All right, I got me a little old box full of all kinds of junk here. Oh, there's only one. That's a pine cone. All right, I'm just going to dump it all in here and I'm going to stir it all up. Got some pieces of pine cone, uh, gumballs, walnuts, you name it. Uh, we just just dump it. There you go. Now let's just stir it all up. And there's a little in my pot. pin blank I made a long time ago, you know, just things like that. Here's some, some gold epoxy. Wait, I think that paper ain't working out. I don't feel that way. Get it out of there. I mean, it's, it needs tearing apart. The reason I'm wearing gloves for some of my aluminum things are, they can be a little hard on the skin. The idea is to go figure out what plastic bowl I'm going to use or bucket or something and uh, cut me a plug, put it in the center and pour this little bead there, I'm going to have to cut that down. Pour me some uh, epoxy, you know, maybe different colors. I may go with some blues and greens and maybe even a little red. and. Uh, Pour a little bit at a time. There's some aluminum got, you got away from me there. Put it in there, should stay. So. Well, I'm gonna make a plug here real quick. I went out back in my pile there and found this piece of pear. Thought it might make a pretty good one. Sort of hate to waste it, but I don't really have another need for it at this juncture. So, 
Let's whirl it up and see what we got. I'm gonna be four inches here and just taper out to whatever that turns out to be. That'll work just fine. Guess I need to turn it on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and whirl it up to a grand here. And I'll be using my beaver. made this spacer to go in here and it has been a lifesaver. I always thought I had a, I always thought I had like a wobbling chuck or something, but what I found out was that uh, some of my chucks and other pieces, they would bottom out before they reached back here. So they, they were on the threads and it would give them a little wobble. So my friend Bruce made me this so that everything I put on now is really against the uh, a very straight edge and it has made a tremendous difference. I can't thank him enough. All right. We're going to go to the other room and play. All right, I'm getting ready to pour this up. I decided to go ahead and use thick set. Uh, the reason being is it's so much thinner and I'm going to have so many boys with this odd hodgepodge of craps and crap in there. I, I'm thinking that pouring the thin stuff on just would not get in all of them and fix that well. And I'm going to do it a little different too. So I'm going to mix up about 16 ounces first. This is a 3 to 1, so I'm going to put 12 ounces of the resin, part A resin. And then I'll fill that up with the hardener up to 16 ounces. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to I'm going to do I'm going to try to do a couple of different colors here, but I want it. And we're going to come up to the 16 line. I got it. Like I said, I'm going to do a couple colors, but I don't want it, you know, like solid colors. I just want a little bit like that right there. And this is that's sort of yellow. So let's uh, find me a stirring stick here, see what this is going to look like. Oh, it doesn't look too bad. The problem with using this in multiple colors is it's so thin, that, and unless you let it either set up or get almost set up, the second color you add will bleed into the first color. I wouldn't mind a little bit, but you don't want it to overtake it. Yeah, now what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to pour this in first. <clears throat> now I'm going to take the little drippings right here. I'm going to put them in my pin mold. And I have a purpose for that. Let me, I had to make sure they're not leaking anything. Because I had to hot glue the bottom. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm going to put the stuff in now. It's like here's a pine cone. It's going in. And I put it in now because I think just just pieces of wood, you know, just odds and ends. And there's some aluminum and stuff like that. Put all that in. Too much crap. Some of it went on the floor. So all this. Uh, Old pin blanks and stuff all chewed up. And gold ones and so forth. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to get this stuff in here. You know it's another pine cone. It's really working good. Yeah, I believe I'm just going to mix up another batch of that because it didn't come up as far as I, want, I thought it would. So I'll do the same thing, but I'll just do another batch 
Or not I'm do my flashy thing with jigger. There it is. The exact same thing, do it twice here. I may end up doing it about three times. I think I'm gonna go ahead with the blue green this time. Yeah, don't know what that's gonna do, but we're gonna see. Hmm. Well you would have thought I planned that, wouldn't you? Alright, I have a new toy. Alright, the last couple of things I've done been a bit too big for my pressure pot. So I remedy that step sucker. There you go, right there. That's a five gallon pressure pot. And what I've done, and of course I had to modify it some naturally. They don't come as pressure pots. There is a paint pressure pots. What I did, first off, this is pretty and clean inside. Put me some uh, wax paper in the bottom, and I got this great big bowl. I'm going to sit in here, and that one's going to sit in that bowl in case it leaks. So let's get this thing over here and see if we can get it in there without dropping it. This one says a maximum of 50 pounds. I didn't read that. I wanted more. I've always used 40 in this work, so I guess this will probably be alright. Now I've got this regulator set for 50, so we got a quick one to get right there. I always take it off, some people say it's on. Now that I wait till that compressor quits so I can hear if it leaks. All right, guys, I got a mess to clean up, and we'll we'll see you tomorrow. We'll see what this <clears> thing looks like. <clears throat> Here's a little something I come up with. A friend of mine helped me tap the center because I couldn't quite get it right. But anyway, uh, you take a three-inch rod, three-eighths inch rod, and you drill and tap the center to whatever screw you want. This is a 1024. Now I've got another one here. Take this off of here so you can see it. All right, what you do is you make you a block, you know, later on I'm going to make one out of aluminum once I know this works right. But it's uh, just a block of hardwood. It's got a little stop right here, see? And it has a 30 degree hole in it. And this is, a, this is an old ground cutter that had a chip in it. So I'm going to make it into a negative rate ground cutter. And you, you set your platform up here and see this sits here like this. And then you can come in here. Of course, with the grinder running, and you know, very gently do that, and you'll get your negative rake out of it. Then you flip it around, and you bring it over here to the finer one to, uh, you know, finalize it. So let's just put this back on the drill. Make sure you can see what I'm doing here. Yeah, I think you can. All right. So you start this rascal going. Put this right here. Now we'll try. Mighty fine to me. Let's see how well you can see that. All right, we need to get better light, don't we? How about that? Looks good to me. Proof will be in the pudding. I'll be turning some resin tomorrow, and I'll be using this one, or trying to use it anyway. It looks nice and symmetrical. That It had a big old chip out of it, and it's gone. It's an excellent use of uh, your used carbides. I mean, to me, they're not wore out today to get a chip in them, because I resharpen them. Okay, there you are. Nice little trick. See, you see my, my pen mold plumb full. Isn't that pretty? Let me turn this thing around here. Or I can see you. So 
So I'll get that off in a little while and get them cut up. And you never know, I might just turn it in. All right, I'm going to use my homemade negative rake round cutter. See if it works. If it doesn't, I'll just put the other one back on and do it the way I know it works. So, let me, and I'm also going to wear a trend, trend mask face shield this time. Mama been fussing at me. this right here, I think I'm going to get that heavier rim cutter with the regular one on it. Now that's just a little old light one, just bouncing too much. This has just got the regular cutter on it, but for what I'm doing now, I think it's good. Took some of that six minute and epoxy and mixed a little bit of that blue green powder in it and filled these places. So now I'm going to do a little bit of uh, power sanded. Looks like uh, no longer than been sitting here, this area is done hardened up. So I guess I cut it out just a little too early, but I'm still not going to do anything with that there. I get this sanded down like I want, I'm going to go ahead and drill from here and start hollowing the bottom out. So let's see what we got here. And I guess I need to turn this on. A little bit right there and there. I'm gonna see if Sealer does it. It doesn't. I'll just have to sand some more. I think that's gonna be a pretty bowl. All right, I got about four coats of. Uh, Cedar on there, men wax sanding cedar, it's a cedar oast, water based cedar. Now I'm going to try a little bit of paste on it. And you know, after each one, I steel wool and uh, scotch, use a scotch pad on it. I don't normally do the outside, but I'm going to this time because I'll have to do it over again. You always do. But you can get it close, and it's not near as much work to do it over again. some of the wax we put on it. I can find it. There it is. Mm. 
And I generally just use my fingers for this. for today guys all right I'm getting ready to drill my death hole uh, my mo method of operation generally is when I do a bowl like this is I drill from this end and drill my death hole and I hollow this end now this is the bottom but I go ahead and hollow it up to about whatever I want to do and I already got these cut as you can see so and then I will epoxy uh, walnut on the bottom and once that sets up I'll, I'll turn either a recess or a tenon in it and clean it up pretty good and then on the other side when I flip it around I won't have much hollowing to do so I'll go ahead and, and glue this this other ring on the top and then I'll finish it up and we'll have a we'll have a pretty bowl my friends all right I'm going to turn this rascal uh, the pair I put in there, it was it was pretty wet, so I don't know what's going to happen here. It didn't move any last night. It better not have. <laughs> Poxy starts moving, we're in trouble anyway. That looks about right. Hold on to this. Make sure that's tight. Bring that over, just snug it. Don't tighten it. And we'll start very, very gently. We'll get ourselves a cool wrist. Make sure the top of your tool rest is clean, that one is not. I am going to use the little beaver. The yeah, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the deflector on it. But this one, this is the one my friend makes and sells. Now, that, not the handle, just the beaver. And see, it has a deflector on it now. It, he call, we call it a little beaver, but it's really not much smaller. It's shorter, but that doesn't really matter. But you see, it's maybe, I'm going to say, the most a quarter inch narrower. But he uses half inch tool steel. And uh, mine, they're, they're made out of just mild steel. Plus, he, he totally sets his cutter in right there. Now, I've got to change that cutter out because that's an R4. I like an R2. Uh, R4 is a 4 inch radius, and I like a 2 inch radius. You can see that if you look, let me see if I can get that cleaned off a little bit right there. If you look real close, you can see more of a, of a radius on mine than you can his. Get up here real close, maybe a, get it right. I get hard to see, and sun's behind the camera there. See there, maybe. See, here it is, and he's got a little deflector on his. I got I got mixed emotions about it, but some people might like it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna turn you off while I go find me an Allen wrench and change that cutter out. All right, I got a new R2 out, and I want you to see the difference right here. Okay, the one on now you can you can see the shiny one is a brand new spick and span one. Now that's a four inch radius on the left, and that's a two inch radius on the right. I like the two inch radius. Uh, mainly because when I do a, a shear cut, it, it works a whole lot better. It's a lot less chance of getting a catch. So anyway, I thought I'd show you that before we start this. All right, there you go. You see my line? That's going to be the lip. So I, I'm, I'm going to come in here with a little beaver. And I'm not going to use a little beaver too awful much because... Uh, this application doesn't lend itself to a beaver very well. It has a tendency to want to chip out that epoxy. But once I get into the wood, it ought to be all right for a little while. And then once we get into uh, the epoxy on the inside, I'll have to go to the negative scrape. I've been, I've been intending to horse around, see if I can't make a, a negative scrape of square cutter. All right, let me get this thing on. 
If it starts chipping real bad, I'll just have to switch back. But I, I thought I would try because a lot of you guys are interested in these, and they're not quite like mine. But they work just as well. They're a little bit tougher because they're thicker and tool steel. I've yet to see one get bent. Oh, let's see. I don't think I'm going to use the air today. Tell you what, I'm going to, I'm going to cut you off because I'm going to go do something. I'm using my other face shield. I hadn't, I hadn't treated it yet, and I'm going to go ahead and do it.